<clears throat> Mic check. My doctor, you can't even make appointments. You're just supposed to hang out. Wow. <laughs> they just say, you just come in. Yeah, we open at 10. We're here till 4. No. Just come in. So, yeah, you got you to gotta get there like like 9.30 and just stand outside. What? Like you're waiting for the Apple store to open. Yeah. Dude, that's insane. <laughs> then you end up wait- yeah, then sometimes you end up waiting like two and a half hours. Holy cow. Yeah, I always have to just call ahead and see how busy they are. I've never been to the doctor and it's been under three hours. Wow. Like Medicaid doctors. Even real doctors, though. I mean, this is just how it's just like, uh, you know. They overbook everything. It's like going to the gym. Well, my doctor, you know, he made some money off me. I think that surgery was about $35,000. Oh, Who for your, for your I arm? don't know. How much do you think it was? I'd be curious to know. It was definitely. I feel like that would be at least like 15K. Yeah, I, I would say 15K. Because, I mean, <laughs> the, just the anesthesia is going to cost a lot. And there was two of them, so it pays more. Oh, yeah. And they always got to. That's why these doctors always want to follow up. Yeah, he showed me a picture of it. Even when you follow up, though, and you're like, they call you, they're like, oh, how are you doing? You're like, I'm fine. Yeah. Like, I'll come in for a follow-up. It's like, no, why? Dude, I got <laughs> I got two follow-ups still. I got the one I just did today, which was nothing. Oh, yeah. And then he told me he wants to see me again in a month. The one today was actually, I almost got upset. Dude, I almost left. So it's busy. I'm about to leave tomorrow for like a month. I don't got time to be wasting time at our, our follow up. Like you know, oh, yeah. dude, you see it. It's like I don't. If I, I was knew- a problem, I would tell you there's a problem. It's yeah, like, yeah. Well, that's the other thing. They, uh, so they had to test it to see if it was cancer. Uh, so I get the thing, and it comes in, which they already told me ahead of time. They're like, it's ninety nine point nine percent sure. It's it's nothing. You know, we checked all these other things. It's been uh, a year. They've been checking shit on me for this. So. You know, I get the notification. Your results came in. You have to see the doctor to find your results through my chart. Oh, wow. So now I'm like, damn, normally when it's something serious, they got you coming in. So, I, you know, I go in and, uh, you know, I mean, most of the time they tell you in person. The people always tell you. If it was you, serious, I feel like they tell you like on the, on the phone call. Oh, yeah, maybe. I didn't have a phone call. I just got the notification yeah. last night, like 7.30 p.m. I got it. Like, uh, your results came in on... Yeah, yeah. that's know, just like an automated thing. Come see the part. doctor and stuff. Yeah. So I go there, you know, appointments at, uh, you know, whatever time. It was at like uh, 11 o'clock or something, 12. And I get there. I think it was like, yeah. And either way, I sign in, I go... I'm waiting. The doctor comes strolling in at one one thirty, two and a half hours after wow. our appointment time. Yeah. He looks like he just got done playing tennis. Dude, he's all by the door killing a cigarette. I'm just like, I don't yeah. like a surgeon that smokes. You're putting your hands in he me. He legit smokes? Yeah. Wow. Are you allowed to do that as a surgeon? I mean, not inside, obviously. Yeah. Well, it wasn't inside the... It was, you see, the. I'm sitting right here. He's right there killing a cigarette. Wow. And then, dude, he chiefs that cigarette down, goes in the back for 45 minutes, and they go, okay, Dom, we'll see you. He's talking to somebody else, and then he goes in the hallway. I could see him from my room. And, dude, like, I'm telling you, people that know me would say this is a Dominic Leonelli bit. We know you made this up. This is the same surgeon that was arguing with his son yeah. about the flights and giving his son a Buick LeSabre. It's like it was <laughs> grandpa's car. Yeah. I'm not buying you a car. When he's, like, marking up my arm. So this dude comes in. He's on the phone. He's clearly distraught. You know, he's like, just tell me what size do you want. I'll put the order in. He comes in. And he's writing down, he's selling discount jackets to people on his phone call wow. while he's checking my arm. He's like, okay, so two <laughs> mediums and one XL, they run big. Wow. And dude, I'm just like, I'm sitting here and he's squeezing this thing. He's drop shipping out here. Yeah, and I'm just like, <laughs> dude, what I like, I don't know what type of doctor this is. Wow. But he's been doing it so long, I guess. He said he's been a surgeon for like 20 years. And he he showed me a picture of my thing that he ripped out of my arm. It was crazy. Well, he's not trying to be a surgeon forever. Yeah. He's hustling. Man. You <laughs> yeah. got to have, you know, multiple income streams coming in. Yeah, dude. He took a picture. He's like, I showed that to my wife. And I'm just like. Well, that's not right. <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. just like, okay. It looked weird, dude. He's like, chicken fat. Looked just like chicken fat. Did it look and he's like, like chicken fat? I'll show you. It just looked like a, a hunk of blood, the meat. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's. I'm sure when it you was washed in your it arm, off, yeah, yeah. it looked like chicken fat. Oh wow! But it was just like um, two two 
stringy th- things together. Yeah, or it's like a cyst or something. Yeah. yeah. I always thought it would just be like a circle, like it felt. I didn't realize it has all well, these it goes in tentacles there. around there. Yeah, yeah, it's like being connected to the, you know, the and, bloodstream and everything. You know, either way, I felt great, though. I had to tell him, like, even now, dude, the pain's going away. And, uh, dude, just the mobility of my forearm, is, it's insane how much that could affect your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when it attaches to your muscles and stuff. And then he's like, yeah, I got to see you in another month. Oh, come on. <laughs> yep. He's like, what are we make doing? the appointment. I'm like, dude, another month from now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sque- all he did was squeeze it and play with it four or five times, and he talked to this, the the doctor training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sitting there like, is it cancer? He's like, he's gonna tell you. He's training. I'm like, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. give me a straight answer. That's my thing though. Is I'm almost positive if it was cancer or something like urgent, that's when they they got to tell you like on the phone. You think Cause it, no? Because it's like there's a lot of people who just wouldn't come in, who just wouldn't return a phone call, or like they don't know how to use their phone. They don't see the they don't see the notification. So if it's like, oh, this is urgent, you you would know. Yeah. I mean, like a doctor like that, especially they're trying to make even more money then. Oh yeah, then, yeah that's like right. ten appointments. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once you've had cancer taken out, it's like no, we're your follow up appointments forever. Right. right. Like you're always gonna have to follow up for this shit. Yeah. So I'm going back. You know, he goes. I know you're not a model, so I just closed it up quick. I'm just like, why would you even tell me that? It looks like shit. Like, oh, could, could be worse, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but when you look at it, I'm going to have a huge dent in my arm for the rest of my life. Oh, uh, wow. You, you could see I mean, you don't want to look at it, but he did a terrible job closing it up. Uh, that's where you got to get a tattoo right there. But, yeah, he's yeah. like, you know, he goes, I'm not, a, I'm not a beauty surgeon. I'm a survival surgeon. Yeah, uh, you did survive. Yeah. Well, hey, I mean, overall, it's like, think about how many people are like just have to live with that kind of stuff yeah if you there's some people who can't even who like make too much for medicaid but they don't have enough for insurance those people like that would just have that on their arm for forever i don't know if i could have to be honest it was with that uncomfortable and it kept getting bigger well i when mean i would eat else? salt and fly it would get huge it's crazy oh, wow. yeah jesus christ yeah, dude, it got to a point to where it caused me constant pain. I had to get it removed. Yeah. Even if I had to pay 10000 I would have did it. Oh, uh, wow. I had to get it done. Dude, I'm telling you, this is the freedom of moving your arm. See, I think what it was is I think it was getting so big or there was two of them. Maybe it was wrapping around the muscles. Yeah. yeah. I was done, dude. I couldn't do. I couldn't sleep. I'd have to lay on it to sleep and like oh, well. I'd be wedging it between the bed and the wall and oh. push the mattress against it. Like, I had to keep pressure on it. Wow. Or tying shirts on it. So you do got to go back, then? Yeah, probably 14 more times. Jeez. I'm definitely going back in a month. I got three more appointments about my dandruff, which it's crazy <laughs> that I had dandruff my whole life so bad. And in my family, they're just like, yeah, you get it from your grandpa. And that's the end of it. Nobody's investigating. My dad's like, yeah, I got dandruff, too, even though i never seen it. And, dude, it turns out I had a medical... I had an infection on my scalp for like 20 years. I had like That's a, like dermatitis or something? Yeah, right? like yeah. A, a problem that needs solved. <laughs> you know? Oh, wow. Since I was seven years old and nobody's even thought, no, you don't. You're fine. Did, you know. That's the stuff that you already got the medication for? Yeah, or? yeah. I just picked up my refills for it. Wow. I could have easily got more perks. He's like, it don't matter to me. You want 10? I'll give you 10. Oh, my God. And I got to get rid of these six I have. I don't even want to throw them in the trash. I got to dissolve them in water or something or find a stripper. Yeah. You know, I didn't know how much perks go for it. Like $50 for a perk. Did you know that? Wow. Well, I know oxys go for like 100 It's crazy. Yeah, well, it's like a dollar per... It's like a dollar per... Oh, it's like, you know. I think perks, they have like that like Tylenol stuff in it so you don't get hooked on it. What I don't understand about painkillers is if you have no pain, what's it do? I mean, it's just like it releases like, uh, you know, euphoria. So you get that, you know, it's really like, well, I don't want to encourage you. But. <laughs> like, you know, Xanax would it make you it. not worry about anything. Yeah, yeah. No matter what's going on. If you t- but I think if you it's just like a, it's like a warm, like, you know. <laughs> a yeah, warm feeling? He- heavenly feeling. Is yeah. it heavenly? Yeah, oh, come on. Supposedly, oh. well, it's an opiate. It's like the best feeling in the world. Oh, I mean, that is an opiate. It's like a chemically like. It's like morphine, right? Yeah. I mean, it's all it all comes from like that same, like, uh, you know. The heroin family. The same, yeah, poppy seed or whatever. Yeah, it is crazy that Coca-Cola was invented by a dude trying to get off heroin. Yeah. Well, people have been taking all that stuff forever. Those like All that opium stuff's been around since like the Middle Ages. I can't believe they used to have heroin cough medicine. Like The fact you could easily OD on something you could buy at the store like that. You could just get codeine. 
But remember you back get, in the twenties, didn't they say heroin? Well, I mean, opium. It wasn't like it wasn't heroin, but it's like you put opium in everything. Or they water it down. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing with like cocaine or you know, methamphetamines or something. The thing is, back in the days, people just didn't party like that. That wasn't like a cool way to party. Yeah. Like abusing the same way that like, uh, you know, they ever had people that do like whippets or something. Yeah, I never hung out, but I know. You've seen that. You've been in the party though. And no, I mean that would start, be a wild. People one, start though. pulling out. No, it's not the CO two containers. The balloons. I don't even know how they make that shit work, but yeah. When you like inhale the balloon or whatever. Well, and I knew the ones with the CO two. Yeah. Well, you take the, the thing. It's like a whipped cream thing, and you fill a balloon, and you. That's like the insane clown posse kind of crowd. But it's the kind of thing where it's like somebody tells me to, that how they do it, and like how it feels, and it's like, this looks horrible. This doesn't look like a cool way to get girls or something. This, you know, it's crazy. This is like fucking trash. There was this dude in our neighborhood that used to go around screaming all the time, like, ah, he's yelling. Yeah. And they said, oh, yeah, he got that from doing whippets. It messed his brain up. Wow. And for years, we were all like, yeah, I, that's why I would never even inhale the balloon for the funny voice. Yeah. I was just terrified my brain would be messed up. Like, when that stuff did come around, it wasn't, it was a ready whip can, yeah. you hold, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, dude, I'm never doing that. I don't want my brain to be wrecked. And then I, I'm talking to uh, a neighbor about the dude. We seen him. And I tell him, man, it's crazy. That's from Whippets. He goes, nah, man. I was with him when that happened. He fell off a telephone pole. Wow. I'm like, dude, for years I didn't do Whippets because of that? This dude had Well, I mean, he probably he probably dodged a bullet there. Yeah. Anyways. I mean, like, those Whippets, it's not like it's, it's not like deadly, but it is like, it, it is frying your brain for like mm. 10 seconds. That's the thing, too. I'm pretty sure that's one of those highs. It's just like, bam, it hits you like a bullet and it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that Use be regular it. drugs. Yeah, don't get this medicated doctor don't, stuff. Don't try to get all like clever with your drugs. It is weird being at the doctors when you hear people trying to get the drugs. Uh, yeah. You know, well, even when you just hear people in general, but, you know, like I've had friends of mine that swear they know how to get any drug. They're like, listen, this is what you got to do. You want to get Xanax, you tell your doctor you're scared of clowns or some crazy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just, I can't stop thinking about clowns. I can't even close my eyes. Yeah, you can't sleep. I heard what was going on in the whole doctor's office today. So the the girl, the person my doctor's talking to before, they're talking about some vaginal secretions, and then he's coming in and feeling on my arm. I'm just like, wow, you know, close the fucking door. Yeah, there should be more privacy at these things. In Ohio, they close the door. You uh, don't hear. In Ohio, you just wait for your doctor. He walks in chipper. Uh, you know, makes you feel like a kid. Yeah. These New York doctors, man, they're just about their they business. They've seen too much. Yeah, dude. All really these doctors is. in New York, especially the Medicaid ones, they have like four different offices to go to. And just they have like their them. real office in Long Island. Then they come in here to the city once a week just to mess around. Yeah. Get some government money. Then they're they're back out to, the, you know, wow. Nantucket or something. How long do you think it takes to become a surgeon? A legit surgeon? I mean, undergrad, college, and then... <laughs> medical school four years and then about four more years after that so like depends when you start counting but i'd say about eight eight years no from like right out of high school oh probably 12 to be that's it 12 years i mean uh if you start out of i mean if you run if you like speed run it then you're you're a surgeon by like 31 32 maybe wow working yeah. under somebody yeah and then like you become like a real like surgeon surgeon in like late 30s and then like late 40s you become like plastic surgeon and that's when you're like really like rolling it in i remember one time i went to go see phil hanley one time at ucb like he was doing the show there or whatever yeah. and uh we were leaving and i was kind of outside and you know some girls were talking to him he killed it and, yeah uh, these girls were all trying to flirt with him and the one girl just became a doctor and she was like i always wanted to do comedy and he's like well you're better off being a doctor. It's probably quicker for you to become a doctor than it is to be a comedian. And, you know, when you really think about that, in my mind, at that point in time, I was just thinking he was being funny. I've been doing comedy 16 years. I'm still not a comedian. I could yeah, have been a doctor. Even You know people that have been comedians and 
two years. It's not right. Like, <laughs> that doesn't. I mean, it doesn't matter well, no, what. I really depends don't what know you mean. People that actually made a living in two years. It's called. Uh, there's lots of people who <laughs> fucking crush it within the first four years of comedy, and it's like they're already yeah. Well, a lot of this could be smoke and mirrors. You think people are no, making no. Money. I mean, we've no, we've seen it. People, people do good, and it's not like being a comedian. It's not well, the thing with being a, a surgeon. It's not like you don't like fail out of it in a year. You can right. have a couple of bad years in comedy, and you're just sort of like back to working a regular job. But yeah, you also don't go into a hundred thousand dollars of debt being a comedian. Yeah, you gotta you build up that hundred k in debt while you're trying to learn how to be a comedian. <laughs> no, nobody goes into that kind of debt. <laughs> you can't get that kind of debt if you're broke. Right. The system works that way. But for medical school, it's like dudes come from India, and they try to become like a dentist in America, and something goes wrong for them. You just end up with like a retarded amount of debt for somebody like that. It is still extremely rare for four years somebody to be making it's 100 rare. plus K a year. Yeah. Like in comedy. Uh, of course. I feel like the baseline to survive in society now, it has bumped up to 100K. I don't know where yeah. that number came from, but it used to be like 60, 70K was a living. Dude, you can't make a living on 60, 70K now. You depends depends where you live. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, dude. It'd be, even in Detroit. Well, oh, it depends like, on what you mean by a living, too. But Right, just like have a, a, a one bedroom car, apartment. a house. I mean, yeah, a house is tough. But yeah, I mean like 80 to 90K, I think. Yeah, dude, you think somebody could buy a house today with 90K? I don't even know if you could. If you're in Detroit, yeah. But I mean, like you are in Detroit. In other- uh, that might be the only place you could do it. No, I mean, there are just like rural parts of America. Just like you can't. You are stuck in that place. It's not like, oh, I'm going to be a comedian on the weekends and I'm going to live in Boise. Right. Because it's like then you're taking four connecting flights to wherever you're going. So The cheapest house you could find, maybe you could find cheaper, but on the lowest end, a livable house that you could actually move into and live in, in Ohio, used to be like 50, 60K. I went oh, it's back. Like 300. Dude, huh? Yeah, dude. Well, I mean, 300, you're in a nice house. Yeah. Like, you're in a, an actual regular nice house, safe neighborhood. Yeah. You got what you want for 300. But for 160, dude, you might hear some gunshots. Yeah, and the <laughs> house is fucking falling apart. Right. Got There's and the dry, it's that old drywall that you can't hang pictures on. You know, you, yeah. you get a nail and something in, the fucking shit breaks. Uh, nope. It's that type of drywall. Yeah, there's still asbestos behind the walls. You don't want to live with that type of drywall. Yeah, well, it's the kind of house where it's like, all right, I'm not homeless anymore, technically. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, you are in a tough situation. Yeah, an abandoned house. Uh, an abandoned house is about 70K in Ohio. Right. You know, that's one of those ones you got to know cheap ways, like how they fixed roofs in the 30s. You got to do that. Oh, cause, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you got to become like a DIY guy at that point. Right. Which is a whole job in itself. That, yeah. I don't want to, I never want to have to fix my own house like that. My brother's always trying to talk me into real estate. Now, I get when you make enough money. You should. I don't see myself as getting into real estate. I mean, I just think that's a way to lose it. Like, you know, my brother's like, well, once you get rich enough, you kind of have to get into real estate. I don't. Maybe you're you talking. To, you to mean s- like investing in real estate or becoming you, a realtor? Uh, no, not becoming a realtor, but I buying, guess buying, investing you mean in like real buying estate. properties. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a reason. Once you get like, it's the only way to actually grow money. Once you have like yeah, money, but then money. Then they're money pits. You know. It can be, but I mean, at least owning the house that you live in, then you're not just losing money. Oh, yeah, money if I own the house I live in, I would definitely That's do the first, that's like the that. starter point. But yeah, but I mean, like, in terms of, especially, if, talking now is a little tough because everything is so high. But yeah. if you had started 20 years ago and you had some money, you could have bought any house anywhere and it would have gone up, like, a lot. Right. Yeah. Now, now it's maxed like, out. Well, eh, you never know. <laughs> People thought it was maxed out in the 80s. But now it's like, yeah, it's kind of, you're probably buying it like a peak if you buy it. plus like say say you do get it like i don't know like these investment properties are like apartment complexes or something then yeah. you got a whole headache going on and dude these people aren't paying right yeah, yeah, yeah do you see there's so many comedians that just they just squat it's crazy i could never have the guts yeah. to do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude would you ever be able to do that for like a month i maybe a month you're looking for somewhere to go but yeah i mean like if it was like i I'd have like one bag where it's like, all right, I got to go in the middle of the night. I'm just out. But I would never want to just like every single day you got to walk by your landlord. I know a guy that got the apartment, lived there for about three months. 
and I don't know how he got away with it. I don't, he has it now. I don't think he's got it anymore. But yeah. he got it about two years after that for yeah. free. Yep. Well, in Manhattan. Uh huh. Even in Manhattan, if you look around close enough, there are lots of like abandoned buildings. If there was like a fire or something. Now, if you can just prove that you've lived there for like three weeks, wow. then it's like they, they can't kick you out at that point. But that will ruin your credit. I mean, I think that's a given for these people. Right. Yeah. Credit is mostly made up if you're not really thinking about it. Yeah. I've never had to, you know. Well, I mean, you do need credit though. Not, not, I mean, we don't, but... If you, when you want to buy a house or a car, yeah, none of these people are going to buy a house. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to buy. Why a house. would I buy when I'm living for free? Yeah, you're not going to buy a house. You don't think you'd ever buy a house? Someday it would be great, but it's like clearly it's not. <laughs> on, you can clearly live this long without buying a house. Yeah, I mean they say the Rockefellers never owned property. I mean that's like the 20s, but like at this point, if I do get rich enough to buy a house, it's like I'm just going to have cash. So I'm, wow. I'm buying that shit. I'm not actually going to be. Like, you really think so? Well, it's either that or just renting. I don't actually care about renting. I, I don't think people make too big of a deal about owning their property and everything. Well, have you ever rented a house from somebody? Yeah. So I did it. I didn't like it. The guy coming over. The dude. Well, also, the dude used to hang out in, the, in my garage when he'd fight with his wife. Yeah. I lived next to the guy whose house. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was a little bit. But I mean, like, that's. I'd rather have a landlord who's, like, too involved than too not involved. Yeah, well, I didn't like this dude. He would just depress me. His wife was always cheating on him. Yeah. And he just smoked cigarettes, and he acted like I was Oprah. He's like, what would I? What would you do? And it's like, dude, uh, I told you. I'd leave the bitch. I don't know what else more to tell you. Right. He'd be like, you know, let me just say, he, you know, people that get cheated on, they start to change their vocabulary up. You ever notice they start talking in, like, legal terms or whatever? Mm -hmm. He's like, you know, what would you do if you busted your wife committing adultery with the guys that you knew since they were kids. They're in their 20s now, and you come over, and they're both on top of your wife. And it's like, I would leave her. Like, we, right. like you know, you're the one staying with her. That's the other problem, though, with, like, if you're investing in real estate, and you're, like, getting really, like, because it's such an, you can't just walk away from it. Right. Shit goes wrong if you, it's like getting married, where it's, like, get, getting in is one thing. Getting out is, like, that, right. it's a whole other bag of hammers than that. So it's like if you're renting a place and something happens in your life, if I get like a some crazy deal, boom, you drop this shit, you're out. But if you if you own property and it's all in your name and you're sharing yeah. it fifty fifty with your wife, and there must be so many people that don't even want to go through a divorce, they can't even get divorced just because there's too much paperwork that they both they got two names on. See, for me, the only reason it would somewhat be beneficial, even though I would never do this type of work again. But if I knew construction, like my cousin, he does construction. Yeah. He's like a union guy. Like uh -huh. these guys get like the deals on cupboards, you yeah. know, and then he could, you know, he could do the work himself. He's a professional carpenter. Right. Now I'm a shitty carpenter. I could make something look good to yeah. the untrained eye, but he'll make something look beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I see why he does it and he's still struggling with it. So it's like, how could I ever expect someone like oh, You don't me? know how to fix a roof though or something. Oh right? yeah, I can fix that. But I mean, oh, yeah, like, dude, if you get the roof, you know how many roofs I fixed in my life? But I mean, if a guy has to fix a roof for it lasts 20 years, 20, 30 years against fucking storms and everything. Yeah, I put about 15 roofs. I used to be a roofer. Yeah, oh, right. But I mean, there's other shit with, it's the, easy. with like elect electrical work. I wouldn't do anything electrical. Do you know anything? Yeah, think about how complex that is. The <laughs> right. electricity has to get from the basement to the. Well, attic. most of the time in the house, the electricity is done. Now, if Still, you got updated, I mean, like, if you lose 20 grand. Yeah, the electrical, all the electrical work I put in in like the 30s. Right. Before they even had like, you know, the iPhone plugs. And the plumbing. See, you're never going to, you know, you're losing 20 grand if you got to re electric a house. Yeah. Easy. You another get, 20 plumbing there's 40 g's of your profit yeah you don't the know basement what, leak is the problem you don't know what termites look like or what structural damage all that structural stuff with the beams and stuff i don't know about foundation i do know you could tell when termites are in some shit yeah but foundation uh, behind the walls in general yeah, yeah well you see you see the evidence yeah you'll see the chewed up wood yeah but as far as like uh where i lost my ass was when the foundation's bad, there's no way I would ever know that. Yeah. You know, you're in the house for two years and then your basement's flooded. Right. That's 20 grand. So yeah. if you look, electrical, plumbing, a roof is the easiest thing. I could do a roof. Right. You know, I knew a guy, I don't know how it worked out for him, but 
he was getting into the housing business and he got insurance and he thought he found some major loophole. He took the roof, a piece of the roof off the house and didn't cover it up and just left it be for four months oh, yeah. and did accidental insurance. And I think he got like $80,000. Right. <laughs> That's one way to do it. But then I think, you know, I think he had to file bankruptcy on the house. Everything was ruined. But I mean, he still walked away with 80 grand, little bankruptcy. Just think about how much of a headache this is, though. You got to fill out all this paperwork and you're always worrying about. Compare, I mean, compare that to renting, where it's like, this is not my problem. Right. I'm losing two grand a month doing this. I'm right. Pay, I paid two grand a month, and when I feel like leaving, I'm out. That's why I feel like renting is the better way. Yeah. I feel like, especially if you're rich, you could rent different places, cool exactly. places. You could be here for a year, boom, you're out. Or, dude, a year, bro, if I had money, I would be Airbnb. If I'm like in New York a week a month, I'd go Airbnb in Soho. Right. 700 that week. Well, I think these days it's not actually Airbnb, but it's just like, you know, private party stuff. Oh, they don't do Airbnb no more? Not really, no. You can't like legally rent out your apartment anymore for like... I mean, but there's got to be Airbnbs in New York. It's not tech. It's not at the actual Airbnb company. It's just like you pay a guy, you know, wow. you probably have to like cash app or something. How do you find those guys? What happened to Airbnb? Uh, rich people. Well, they, people like uh, were abusing it. So you can't have like, it's fucking up the real estate market. Hmm. People were buying apartments just to do Airbnb. Yeah. And you know, you remember your old place? Oh, yeah. You know, LES, and it was like, there were people, it was all over the city. People were doing that. Yeah. And that's why rents got all messed up in the city. Because, Cleaning up too. Yeah. This dude. Seven, built. seven bedrooms in a little apartment. Yep. He had, he had, um, I think he did have, I think he had six bedrooms in a little apartment. Then the landlord actually lived in the walk-in closet. <laughs> yeah. So there was no window. And when me and her were the landlords, we shared that room it's a lot of sheet changing, but it was. I think the rooms were between six and nine hundred. Wow! And uh, yeah, he had about six renters between five to six renters all the time. And you just Sometimes have like a, a little key thing that you press a code and you get the key. Yep. And then you don't even got to be there for it. No, we would have to be there just to give them their sheets, say hello, yeah, show them the. Well, apartment. yeah, I mean, you you hire some fucking idiot like oh, you, right? right? Yeah, that's <laughs> the, what the, he actual, did. the guy, is, <laughs> the guy is it's a pimp. He's yeah, sitting the back. dude was in like London. Yeah. He was yelling at us all the time about the air conditioner. Yeah. He's like, you guys got to make sure they're not running the air. Like he didn't even want them to have air on. Wow, so cheap, man. Yeah, hey, all those Airbnbs now they charge you for cleaning. And then, like, you got to clean up after yourself anyways, and they make you do dishes and stuff. Yeah, and when he seen my tools and knew I did some painting and some flooring and stuff, me uh -huh. and my buddy Mike were there. And Mike's talking to him. He's like, oh, yeah, this floor, this could come out. And, you know, Mike's telling him he does it for a business. He's like, I mean, everything, you know, this apartment downtown, the floors, he's like, and fixing the walls. Some of the walls were bowed out. Mike gave him, like, a... a Twenty thousand dollar thing. He's like, it'd probably be around twenty thousand for everything. It'd take like a month, and the dude's like, oh, okay, so I'll just let you live here for what six months, and then oh, we'll wow. be even. And I'm like, no, <laughs> that doesn't add up. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, not at all. I was like, no, nah, I'll just take the twenty grand and I'll live somewhere else. Yeah. So I started doing the job for him, and dude, he's there every day. Got me doing other jobs. He's like, just stop on this. I need you to put an air conditioner up in Harlem. He had like five rooms. Wow. I'm like, dude, I had to block him on everything. I think me and my girl broke up because of the fucking dude. Wow. Think about like this dude has. How He'd much always month? touch on me and then he'd be like, just so you know, I'm gay. I'm not interested, baby. And I'm just like. That doesn't add up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, why do you keep feeling Every, Everything about this guy doesn't <laughs> add up. Yeah. Oh, yeah he's Real just, long hair. He's trying to throw you off. Signal. Yeah. But think about how much fucking money this guy must have been making every single month. I can give you a good idea. His hobby was hula hoop. Dude, he would hula hoop for a workout. And that's what he did. And it's like, dude, you know how much money you got to make to pick up a hula hoop to be a grown man? You got to not have one care in the world. Yeah, I guess. He would go outside and hula hoop. But I mean, just like, on. think about that as a business model, though, in terms of like, you're trying to, cause each, each Airbnb is like seven separate businesses <laughs> for each room. Wow. So think about how much stuff he has, how many different plates he has spinning at all times. He had he had like four or five apartments in LES, and I knew he had the one in the Harlem. Man, okay. that dude. I mean, like Airbnb, a lot of that people lost their shirt towards the end, but that guy must have been making like 
50 grand a month. It's always his business partner. He'll always, you know, those people always got that silent business oh, yeah. partner. Yeah, it's my business partner. I would, but my business partner. Yeah, it's the Russian mob. Yeah, fuck your business partner, dude. I'm sleeping here tonight. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure some of that stuff's mobbed up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had to it's pick the cash. lock. Dude, I don't even think he was paying rent there. I think he was. Yeah, exactly. He was squatting the whole Airbnb uh, apartment because they kept locking him out. Dude, I had to pick the lock. I had to break the lock with a hammer and a straight tip wow. three times. That's you know what's crazy. You could be in LES where it's so expensive, and three times I took a hammer and a straight tip screwdriver, broad daylight in broken apartments with people wow. outside looking at me. Well, I mean that play that area. It's very expensive, but it does look kind of shitty. I seen so, a dude cutting up a car yeah, yeah. in pieces. I talked to him. He's like, I can't afford it no more. I'm gonna say it's stolen. Wow. I'm just like, dude, like, isn't there a camera? Yeah. You're just cutting up a car at 11 a.m. Wow. In the middle of the street on Delancey. Yeah. You just hear. What's crazy about that whole area, though? It's like you were living in this weird apartment with seven bedrooms. Yeah. Back and if you went back like a hundred years, back when it was all like Jewish Italian immigrants, there were like fifteen people in each apartment. That is crazy. Just sleeping like next to each other on <laughs> in, like cots. It is all crazy. sharing that's sharing how, mattresses and shit. I mean, that's how they grew up. My dad grew up with um, seven brothers and a sister, and they all had one bedroom. Wow. It Just, was. Where was this? In Ohio. I mean, that's how Italians lived. Oh, wow. Italians and Spanish people actually live very similar. I'm surprised they don't hang out more. Well, I mean, if you go now to like uh, Queens and like Elmhurst <laughs> or like Corona, where you see all these immigrant guys coming in, it's, it'll be like a room like this, but it's for like eight people. Yeah. And it's like, you know, one guy goes to work, then someone else takes his place in bed. Yeah. Like, you know, a lot of my, I got friends that are Spanish. They look at me like I'm crazy. I'm like... You know, I'll be like, man, you're 56. You you never moved out, never yeah. left your mom's, and they'll be all confused. B, why the fuck would I do that? Yeah, she makes <laughs> soup. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, man, that's she makes crazy. The breakfast, yeah, right. my brother. Well, the thing there, is, that's, there. that's most cultures in the world is that unless you get married, you just stick around. Yeah, and then at a certain point, your parents are too old that you take care of them. You know. Italians like that too. See, the problem was a little bit more my white side rubbed off, and white people, dude, nine times out of ten, I mean, it's yo, you got to go. You're eighteen. Most of my white friends. Well, also then it's also like once your parents are too old, it's like you put them in a home, right? And you walk away. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And you pretend that they've been dead for a while. I'm not That's a trained true. nurse. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you're on your own. No, you're right. They do right in the home. But I mean, like you go to Asia or anywhere in like, you know, Japan or China or anywhere. It's like you see there's like four generations in the same house. Yeah. And it kind of works. I mean, it makes sense. It does like economically, it does add up. Well, it does add up. But I'm telling you, I see it. And, you know, you see the TikToks. Once they make the mistake and they marry outside their culture, that new girl, that white girl or that black girl, whatever she is that ain't Japanese, she don't want your mother there. Okay, she's going to say, no, you're me, mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She needs to get out. But I mean, like, just up. in terms of, like, the way things, economically, in terms of, like, how much money everybody is put spending every month and how much is coming in, it's like, that's how you actually build wealth. That's when you talk about, like, new immigrants that, like, you see it now with, like, Latino immigrants who got here in, like, the 70s. They all lived in the same house, the next house or it, they can buy that. And they yeah. end up building an entire neighborhood out of like the same two families. Yeah. Uh, whereas everybody else, it's like you turn 18, then you've got to move off to another city and you're trying to work a job and all of your money is going to Become rent. Become an adult. Yeah. But it's like if you're in these other cultures where it's like, no, we're all saving our money together and we're all going to buy one big house and, you know, sell corn or something. But it never works out. It does. That generational wealth. I mean, how often do you see when people live at home till they're in their 50s? Most of the time, they're just broke when they're 50. They never nah. had the incentive go to, go to work. California. Really? Go to like Southern California, <laughs> like Orange County, where the places where it's all like a Latino, it's all Latinos. It used to be like they were like working class neighborhoods in like the 80s. But then all those people, they all just, you know, they work construction or something. And that's, you make pretty good money after a yeah. while once you know what you're doing. And it's an entire, it's all, you know, it's a family business. Huh. Kid graduates from high school. He starts doing construction with his dad, whatever, like contracting work. By the time that kid is 40, he's never paid rent. Right. So he's making full, you know, these guys work 60 hours a week. That money's got to go somewhere. How much Bud Light can you buy? Oh, but that's the thing. It goes to a big truck, Bud Light, a yeah. girl. Yeah, that's building, that's living. 
And then yeah. eventually you end up with a, well, they're not spending $800 a month in rent. Mm. Right. And they're not, you know, trying to like uh, start their own podcast business. Well, I guess they're New York's actually working. a little different. New York's not a place you come to save money. Exactly. I mean, people in New York, they're all, everybody's renting here. They're smoking dope. Well, no, nobody in New York City is actually trying to buy their house. It's like... Yeah, it's unattainable. Well, I mean, that's something you should have done back like 100 years ago. <laughs> right. If you missed the boat on that, it's like, I'm sorry, you get to rent. Yeah. Which is, you know, has its own advantages, but... How much do you even think... I, I mean, you could buy a place, but I don't know what you would have to show proof of income because i seen an apartment. There's one on the Upper West Side for sale for $3 million, But mm -hmm. it's like... That's pretty cheap when you think about you would own a piece in New York for three million. Well, I mean, in this neighborhood, you get something for like two, one, one and a half, two million. But wow. it's just like, uh, yeah, I mean, it'll be like a three. It's the kind of thing where like you'll get your money back in like thirty years after you rent it after long enough. Well, I mean, I would just want to buy an apartment in New York and live there. Like that's my dream. Yeah, just like one unit. That'd be like I like a two bedroom. Yeah, I mean, but I mean I like could. and not not like a building. Oh, you rent right, out. just a nice ass one building. apartment. It's that'd yeah. be like two million, and you'd have to live like in like, oh, Sunset Park or something. Upper West Side for three point two million, maybe. It would be like way upper west. You know? <laughs> yeah, like the eighties. Yeah, well, it's like at that point you're almost in like it's like Harlem or something. Yeah, but I mean like yeah, at that point that's not even like. Uh, you just signed a big ass deal. Something must have gone real right for you. That's they not something where it, yeah, it's not something where you're a teacher who's like now, saving up every month. Let's just say you ran into a lot of money touring, doing comedy, social yeah. media, and you had five million. Okay, are you gonna buy a a place in New York for three million? A little shitty apartment? No, <laughs> no I wouldn't. I would just rent. It's, yeah, yeah. I don't see any advantage to. Dropping the three mil on there because no. you could live off the interest. Maybe that well, not five even. million interest could pay your rent in New York somewhere. I mean, I wouldn't even live off the interest. I'd live off of this all this fucking money I'm making. Yeah, would, <laughs> people overthink this stuff so much. Everybody thinks that they're going to try to be some sort of like mogul on the side, right? And it's like, no, if you got that much money, you got money. Uh, yeah, you so, don't need no connive. Then, <laughs> exactly. I would, I would spend probably five grand a month on rent at that point. It'd be fine. I want to get like my grandfather, dude. He like. Dude, my my pup, my great this is my great grandfather we're talking oh, yeah. about. Dude, he lied and took his brother's identity to fight in the war when he was like fourteen, and they let him do it. Wow! And uh, you know he's just an all around badass. You know, and like that people would say, "Oh, don't talk about war." He'd be like, "I love that shit." Yeah, I killed him. Right. But, you know that's what we had to do, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he just leaves it be at that. And he's just like, you know, dude, he didn't spend money on anything, bro. Of course. He marked down every dollar he spent. He wrote down a notebook. Like, he just knew every dollar. What did he do for work? He worked in a steel mill. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. And those guys all had three jobs back then. They had nine kids. When you say, why'd you have three jobs? He goes, I had nine kids. So yeah. he worked in the steel mill during the day. You know, I think he did some security stuff at night somewhere. Yeah. And I think he even bagged groceries or something at the grocery store between the mm -hmm. jobs. Uh, <laughs> you know, imagine having that type of work ethic, bro. Well, and it's the kind of thing. Money. Dad with mil a couple mil, I bet. You don't even have time to spend money at that point. Yeah. All you're doing is working. So. Yeah. Yeah. But those old, those older people, man, they budgeted way. They'd look at you like you were crazy for buying one of those juices. These $5 juices, it would blow their mind if they seen you make that purchase. Well, it's like you would look up to this guy who has all this money, but it's like, for what? It's not, he didn't actually like, I mean, all you do is work. Yeah. Do you want to just work all the time? I don't get no, it. No, but I want a budget like he did. For what? Just to have my money put away. But I mean, you have to work 24 hours a day to have that kind of money <laughs> or you wouldn't make enough. Well, no, I look up to how he budgeted though. I'm telling you, he didn't spend nothing. That's not about budgeting. That's also about how much money he was making. No, if right. he was just making way less money, it's like it's not. You don't get to crunch the you numbers. You can't budget it. Yeah, unless you want to like radically change your life. All those guys got out of the war and bought a brand new car off the showroom floor too. Isn't that crazy? She you was can't cheap. get out of the army now and do that. Yeah, yeah. Like, she was imagine cheaper. Imagine somebody then. getting out of the army. They do their four years and they want to be like their grandpa and go buy that new SS Mustang for eighty grand. Yeah. It ain't happening. It's like, bro, no, you need uh, about sixty more years in the military to buy that. Time's changed. 
Yeah, even back then you could buy a house for like 12000 Yeah, they all tell you that. Oh, yeah, I went out, went to the car dealership. I said, give me the fastest, most expensive car you got. I don't think people Sh- people weren't buying used cars back then. I don't think No, either. Shelby Mustang, 2800 Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, I paid cash for it. My Uncle Lou, I'll never forget, he told me a story. I was saving up for a car when I was 16. I was cutting grass and doing all this stuff. And he's like, you'll get one. He goes, man, feels like just yesterday I was 16. He goes, and I remember I wanted a convertible. And he goes, and all I could find, all I could afford was this hard top. It was a hard top 64 Impala for 11 bucks. And he goes, and I had it. And I had another 18 bucks. And the dude said he knew where there was a convertible. Hmm. He's like, I gave him the whole, I gave him 20 Gave him the full twenty, got both cars. I'm wow. just like, dude, it's insane. You bought a fuck, two cars for a twenty dollar bill, and this was like they were only three years old at the time. Like well, I mean, that's not like they, he didn't pay the retail price, right? You just, you just bill. bought two cars off of a drug addict, though. That's not like that's no, not how much. Just, that's what they sold for back then. Cars uh, were cars that were cheap. not twenty dollars in the sixties, bro. <laughs> Look it up. This is not. This isn't even like we can argue about this. Cars were not twenty dollars. <laughs> Oh, this is you're. I'm not saying he lied, but I'm no. saying the same way you could buy a car theoretically for a hundred bucks now, if you're buying off somebody who's hooked on yeah, heroin, or you or, buy the car that's a little rotted out. But, but you, buy you a could car never is, buy. I mean, even a hundred dollars, dude. I mean, but clearly you're buying a car that there's something wrong with. I mean, I knew back twenty years ago you could get cars for one hundred and fifty bucks, two hundred bucks, but dude, twenty is crazy. And now, dude, so the uncles backed them up. I mean, that no, you know, a lot is, of those guys just bought cars. Look, anybody that, watching this, Google this right now. Go on ChatGPT. <laughs> you can. This is these are numbers that can be found. There were no cars that were being it. sold get for twenty dollars. We got to get even the like the Model T back in like the nineteen twenties, <laughs> the original Ford Model T. This this was the car that cost. It cost like four hundred bucks when cars, it came out. They say they were a dime a dozen back. I would no. love to hear car guys in this. This man is lying to See, you right now. You, that's also it could be tall some tales Ohio told shit. by a, yeah country boy Ohio shit man. Tall tales told by an alcoholic. <laughs>